Hello and welcome back to Mirka Chris. This is a game that takes skill. This is a game that takes creative thinking. This is a game that takes time. Of course I do own the original three Splint Cell games on the PlayStation 2 and such, but I have specifically been going back to them on this PlayStation 3 HD Remastered Trilogy. I've got quite a few of these remastered PS3 games, but this was one I was really looking forward to playing. And I have just completed, as of yesterday, the first Splinter Cell. The first question is, is it a game that still holds up today in 2017? Because this is an early 2000s release. I would say yes, it does hold up. As long as when you don't go back, you don't play like Chaos Theory first or something. Don't play any of the sequels first. Go back straight to the first game first, then move up to the second and third and fourth, fifth game. It really does a good job of introducing you to Sam Fisher, the main protagonist of these games, and the whole world of this Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. I remember playing the PlayStation 2 version years ago. This was back when the original three were out, I think, maybe. It might have just been the first two, actually, Pandora Tomorrow and Splinter Cell. I went home and tried to play it because I thought it looked so cool. And of course, you know, you have to do the training mission first. Yeah, I couldn't get past it. I thought the game was rubbish at first because I got up to an optional door, as I've realised now it's an optional door. When playing on the PlayStation 2, I must have walked up to it. You had to pick lock the door and I couldn't figure out how on earth you did that. I don't, I, it was so confusing to me as a kid back then because I haven't really played a stealth game like that. I just couldn't figure it out. And so I basically rage quit the game, thought the game was rubbish. And it wasn't until a year later when I was like, that wasn't too bad of an idea, Splinter so Cell. I'll give it another shot. And then I did and I finished it like that because, because you know, it actually tells you how to do it. You know? <sighs> I'm so glad I did though, because this instantly became one of my favourite franchises of all time in terms of gaming. Like I said, Sam Fisher, the protagonist, is a great protagonist for these games. He's just he's just so cool. He's kind of like a cool mix between Jason Bourne and James Bond. He, he doesn't have the over-the-topness of James Bond, but he can't have the more grounded appeal that Jason Bourne has. And of course, Michael Ironside famously did the voice of him for the first five or six games up until Blacklist the most recent game, which is actually the only one I haven't played yet. He was replaced by a different actor because of body motion capture technology taking over or something like that. But Michael Ironside is the iconic Sam Fisher in my opinion. His voice is just so deep and intense and that's what you want from this character. It feels so natural as well. He gives such a great performance throughout the entire series as Sam Fisher. He's less developed in this game, he's a bit more two-dimensional and just kind of doing the job, but he kind of makes jokes and stuff. He has a lot of dry humour. Of course, even though Michael Ironside is brilliant as Sam Fisher, the same can't really be said about the other voice actors. Man, you must be itching to get back out in the field, huh? It's all I'm good at. Well, it's all we need. Welcome to the NSA. They don't get much better than that. Going onto the game for the first time in years, I was like, oh my god, these graphics are so dated. It's very choppy and the characters are very like blocky and don't really look realistic in proportions and stuff. Of course this is early PlayStation 2 era technology so I should really give it a bit of slack really. But it was when the game introduced lighting, brightness of a light bulb compared to the darkness of the shadows. Like if you hide in the darkness the enemy eye can't see you if you're in the pitch black side of darkness. Depending on how much in the light you are the more visible you are. And it was really through the lighting that I was like, hold on. This game looks really good. Like the contrast between light and dark is beautiful. Though of course you can't really say the same for the cutscenes. The game heavily tries to get the story and characters through the cutscenes in the game. There's quite a lot of them, like cinematic cutscenes with cameras and it's all anamorphic and stuff. And most of the time it's set on a, a ship and it's really pitch black. It's almost like a submarine. Like you know like in, in films that feature submarines where it's all very dark and you can barely see the faces because there's a lack of light 
they kind of went for that route and the CGI is somehow terrible in the cutscenes, but it isn't during the game. It kind of takes you out of the immersion. As well as this, the game also likes to feature this guy on TV a whole lot more than they should. Just take a look at this clip. Continued fighting in the Abkhazia and South Ossetia regions has hindered Georgia's hopes of integration into Western institutions. Industry baron Kambain Nikolaad seized power today in a bloodless coup installing himself in the presidential palace behind a wall of political and military support. Yeah. They really go on that long. I cut that down. It actually goes on a whole lot longer than that. I, it got to the point where I was skipping them, but I couldn't pay attention. It was just so dreary and boring. Stuff like that doesn't really hold up today. The game does feel dated in that sense because of these sort of things. But of course not the gameplay. The gameplay is... I don't know what that noise was. Another highlight about this game is the enemy AI, because it's about stealth. Of course you want the enemy to be good, to be kind of self-aware and understand what's going on in the location that you're in. Uh, so like if you're sneaking about and they hear something, they will react to it and they will go and actually search out what's going on. If they see you, they will respond to that. It's, it's a bit more believable than the second game, I think. Yeah, Pandora Tomorrow, I thought the AI was nowhere near as smart as it were in this one. Like one thing, for example, in the first game that I really liked was the lack of expository dialogue from the enemy AI. It was kind of like this infamous belief that video game AI state what they're feeling. Like for example, it'll be like, I thought I saw something in the shadows over there. Let's go check it out. Oh no, it was nothing. The first game doesn't really do that. It's more just done through visuals, like the people walk over and go, huh? And that's about it, and then they'll walk away maybe and go return to their post. Huh? What was that? Like I said in the beginning, this game takes time. Most of your playtime, if done correctly, is hiding behind corners and hiding in the darkness, analyzing enemy routines and what they do and where they walk and who they interact with and at what time and such, and then waiting for the right moment to strike. That's fun. And, and this is one of my big points, even back when I was a kid, enemy bodies, they don't just magically disappear. you shoot somebody, they fall to the ground and they're there throughout the rest of the level. You can, however, pick them up and move them into the darkness or into a storage cupboard, shoot out the light, or flick the switch I guess, and then the body's hidden and it stays there until the end of the level. Thank you Splinter Cell. Thank you. I love that. <sighs> One of the things that does take me out of the immersion of gameplay is you'll have a set amount of ammo for your weapons. Sometimes you can pick up ammo boxes, but you're restricted to your own weapons that you've been supplied with, and they always come with a suppressor as well. Like for example you have a pistol and then later on you get an assault rifle or something. But especially towards the end of the game I found myself lacking in ammo. Like there'll be hordes of enemies and I won't have any ammo, and I'll have to literally keep restarting checkpoints to be able to figure myself a way around shooting them and find a different way of doing it. And this is great and all, I love that, that you are literally restricted on ammo. But the enemy have ammo, they have guns! And when they're lying on the ground, why can't I pick up their assault rifle and start firing too? Especially if I've already alerted all the guards and I'm restricted to like two bullets. That's a bit of an issue for me. But it didn't totally bring the game to a halt for me. That's another thing I was playing this in hard mode by the way, just, just so you're aware in case I say something that isn't, doesn't ring true to you if you played on normal, because I'm a hardcore gamer. No, 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 I, did, I, I just wanted the trophies. Another thing about the guns and the weapons is aiming can be really difficult in this game and not particularly in a good way. Even with your pistol, if you're aiming and you've got it completely still, aiming at a light bulb from a certain distance and you shoot, it might go over there for example instead of like over there. Well, 
Okay, maybe not to that extent, but you get the point. When you upgrade to the assault rifle, you can aim down the score, but it does this. While you're aiming down the scope trying to get a headshot. I don't think there's a way to hold your breath like there is in most first person shooters for example. <gasps> I don't think you get that option. It can be a real struggle when you're really panicking and you're like, oh my god! And then you have to literally wait five seconds for the swaying of the gun to come down to maybe a headshot and then you pull the trigger and you might miss or you might not. It's like a 50-50 chance. Just a little thing that I think Pandora tomorrow, as I'm playing through that again, has kind of improved upon, so we'll see about that whilst I go through that game, I guess. And one last thing, I guess, I don't really care for the narrative of this game. I can't really remember what happened narrative-wise. I don't really know why I was in half the missions doing what I was doing. I don't really remember what I was meant to be doing. I just clicked through objectives and went to see what I was meant to be doing in the moment. I don't really know what the purpose of it was. And I'm okay with that. Most games, yeah, I, I need a bit of motivation and story. But this, I'm fine with it. This has the gameplay to make up for it. Most missions allow you to use stealth throughout and that's fun enough for me. The game is very open-ended in the potential you have to get around a, a situation, for example. This is a really fun game that still holds up by today's standards, in my opinion. And yes, there are the odd glitch or two, but I had a lot of repeating sound effects going on throughout the entire mission that would carry on into other missions. Like, for example, there was a time when I put down a, a flare, and then that sound effect wouldn't disappear throughout the entire game, no matter how far away I was from that flare. And then it carry on into another mission where people would be talking, but I'd hear <laughs> from a flare that doesn't actually exist in the level that I'm in. That was a bit of an issue for me. It did stop eventually. But it's an old game. So yeah, great game. Love Sam Fisher. So, my overall rating for Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is 8.0 out of 10. Yeah. Yay. Really solid game. I can't wait to get through the rest of Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. I'm not sure if I will do a review on the other two games. I'm not sure yet. But you know, back to you, Chris. There we have it. Yep, thank you for watching. I hope you at least kind of enjoyed the review. Uh, sorry if I hurt your opinion or offended your opinion. But, you know, make sure to check out my channel for some other video game related stuff. I've got a lot of film stuff on here as well because it's basically a channel all about films, games and stuff. So remember to like and subscribe because why wouldn't you? And hopefully that means that I can see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.